Good day, everyone. Welcome to ASEAN News. President Cheney has great importance to armed forces development. Since the 18th National Congress of the Communist Party of China in 2012, Chinese President Xi Jinping attaches close attention to the military training, inspecting grassroots level armed forces units dozens of times, while making a series of important decisions on strengthening and revitalizing the military. He emphasizes that it is a dream about building China of building the Chinese armed forces into a powerful military. She inspected the training of recruits at the training base, congratulating the trainees on their remarkable progress while encouraging them to train harder and become real soldiers as soon as possible. I hope you will cherish the training opportunity here, train hard and steal your will so as to become real soldiers as soon as possible and make your own contributions. On July 30, 2017, she reviewed a grand military parade at the Zurihe military training base in North China's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region to mark the 90th founding anniversary of the PLA. Officers and soldiers, you must unswervingly regard combat capability as the sole and fundamental benchmark, focus on war preparedness, and forge an elite and powerful force that is always ready to fight, capable of combat and sure to win. On January 3, 2018, she issued orders at an army assembly to mobilize the armed forces in their New Year training sessions, stressing the importance of real combat trainings and the ability of winning wars. I hereby give my orders, the military units at all levels should strengthen military training and war preparedness and sovereignly place military training at a strategic position and effectively implement military training as its central task. In July 2020, she expected the Aviation University of the Air Force in the Changchun City, capital of northeast China's Jilin province. She went to the training ground where he talked to the cadets and encouraged them to work hard and make contributions to the building of a strong army and overwhelming spirit in defiance of any powerful enemy. That's the soul for us to build a strong army. During the visit, senior Chinese diplomat and Japanese foreign minister discusses on regional tensions and pandemic coronavirus. China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi visits Tokyo, marking the first such high-level trip since Japan picked a new leader in September and amid mounting concerns over Beijing's growing assertiveness in the region. At the beginning of the meeting with Wang, the Japanese Foreign Minister Toshimitsu Motegi says the relations between Japan and China are extremely important for the region and the world, and calls for cooperation to tackle global challenges together. Wong stresses the need for continuous communication under our combined leadership. Today, we had a first face-to-face -face meeting against the backdrop of the coronavirus pandemic, which is timely and meaningful. Before the meeting, Motegi says he will have a frank exchange of views on bilateral relations with Wong, including on how to resume traffic between the two countries during the pandemic. Japanese media reports that Motegi will also raise concerns about China's beefed-up activity in the East China Sea. Wang will fly to South Korea after Japan for talks that will include North Korea. Japan protective expensive million yen masks fight against coronavirus pandemic. Japanese protects against the coronavirus in luxury style with opulent masks adorned with diamond and pearls for a cool million yen or $9,600 each. I'm concerned about the price. It's a little bit expensive and it's concerning, so I cannot buy it easily. <laughs> Coscosmask.com chain began selling the handmade masks with the aim of cheering up people and spurring sales in the fashion industry depressed by the COVID-19 pandemic. The diamond mask is embellished with a 0.7 carat diamond and more than 300 pieces of Swarovski crystal, while the pearl mask contains some 330 Japanese Akoya pearls. Some visitors to the store are concerned the million yen masks might be out of their league. If I wear one of these face masks, I have to wear suitable clothes to match it, so I think it's a bit embarrassing. 
The luxurious masks have not been purchased yet, but they're still far from the world's most expensive. That honor belongs to a $1.5 million mask made with 250 grams of 18 karat gold designed by Israeli jeweler Ivel. Australia and Japan access forces agreement to strengthen defense between two countries. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison says that the relationship between Japan and Australia are making significant evolution after the two countries agree on breakthrough defense pact. The reciprocal access agreement strengthens defense ties between the two United States allies at a time when China is asserting its role in the region and the United States is going through a leadership transition. What this I think says is that Australia and Japan as liberal market-based democracies have a, a lot in common and uh, we have strategic interests with the line. And so this relationship, which is effectively a status of forces agreement that we'll seek to conclude next year, the only other such agreement is with the United States, which occurred back in 1960. And so this is a significant um, uh, evolution of this relationship. But there is, there is no reason for that to cause any concern elsewhere in the region. If anything, I think it adds to the stability of the region, which is a good thing. The pact allows troops to visit each other's country and conduct training and joint operations. Japan's first agreement covering the presence of a foreign military on its soil since a status on forces agreement in 1960 that allowed the United States to base warships, fighter jets and thousands of troops in and around Japan as a part of an alliance that Washington describes as a bedrock of regional security. We expect to increase our, our, our regional cooperation. In, in many forms, and uh, the Malabar exercise have, rec have been, been conducted in, together with the United States and, and together with India, and we would expect to further expand our, our cooperation in those areas. That's the whole point of, of streamlining the arrangements with a, a status of forces a, agreement of this nature. Tokyo and Canberra are seeking closer ties as they worry about Chinese activity in the region, including militarization in the South China Sea, maneuvers around disputed islands in the East China Sea, and Beijing's growing sway over Pacific island nations further east. Morrison are in Tokyo to sign the agreement with his counterpart Yoshihide Suga, becoming the first world leader to meet the Japanese Prime Minister in person. The Chinese president calls on the military to increase capabilities from training to win the war. Chinese President Xi Jinping orders the armed forces to strengthen training under real combat conditions and raise the capability of winning wars. She also General Secretary of the Communist Party of China, Central Committee and Chairman of the Central Military Commission made the remarks at the CMC meeting on military training. He stresses the importance of implementing the CPC's thought on building strong military in the new era and continuing to focus on war preparation plus further reform and innovation. That the military training is the core of military war and is the basic way of improving combat efficiency. She also calls for strengthening strategic planning and top-level design and achieving progress in the transformation of military training while paying attention to joint training system and science and technology application. Zhang Yuxia, CMC Vice Chairman, read the notification on commanding 10 units and 23 individuals for their outstanding performances in military training at the meeting, which was presided over by Xu Xiliang, the other CMC Vice Chairman. She and other military officials grant certificates and medals for them. Before the meeting, she meets with the representative of outstanding units and individuals and posts for a group photos with them. Thailand anti-government protesters called to Kim to give up royal fortune. Thailand protesters calls on King Mahavajiralongkorn to give up control over royal fortune value in the tens of billions of dollars at the latest in months of demonstrations focused squarely on the monarchy. Police summons many of the best-known protest leaders, charges of insulting the monarchy, which can mean up to 15 years in prison. Thousands of demonstrators plan to protest outside the Crown Property Bureau, which manages the royal assets and shares in the bank rose more than 2%, more than twice as much as the broader market. We cannot scrutinize anything. There were many questions left unanswered. Whether it be the monarch's assets or the taxes that they use, the people were left with so many unanswered questions. The palace has made no comment since the protests began, but when the king was asked about the protesters, recently he said they were loved all the same. 
Police sources said 15 protest leaders faced the charges, which they must acknowledge by the end of the month. International human rights groups also condemned the use of the charges. Responding to the criticism, government spokeswoman Rachara Dadirek says the government has been open-minded to rights and freedoms despite many imprudent expressions which offend the majority. The government must use its authorized powers. Japanese Prime Minister visits Chinese Foreign Minister in Tokyo on strong bilateral ties. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga meets with visiting Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi in Tokyo. The two sides reiterate the importance of strong bilateral ties. Suga says a stable relationship between the two countries are vital for the region and international community. Wang conveys Chinese President Xi Jinping's message to Suga. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi met Suga at the end of his two-day trip in Japan, marking the first high-level visit since Suga was elected as a new leader in September. Furthermore, both sides agreed to continue to develop their relationships in the direction of positive changes and development. During the meeting, South Korea and Chinese talk about peace, stability and promote global governance and COVID-19. The foreign ministers of South Korea and China pledged to work together to advance bilateral ties and tackle regional and global issues, including stale nuclear talks involving North Korea and coronavirus pandemic. <laughs> South Korea's Kang kyung wha held talks with her Chinese counterpart, Wang Yi, who arrived in Seoul late after spending two days in Tokyo amid talk of trip to Seoul by Chinese President Xi Jinping. Wong says, to highlight the importance of bilateral relations as the two countries cooperate as strategic partners on defending regional peace and stability and promote global governance. Kang thanks Wong for the visit, expressing hopes for an exchange of views to deepen cooperation on issues including North Korea, the pandemic and economic recovery ahead of the 30th anniversary of the bilateral relations in 2022. The data shows the victims of COVID-19 rising in Jakarta. The health expert says burial grounds that are rapidly expand to cope with the rising number of coronavirus infections and deaths in the Indonesian capital of Jakarta. The Southeast Asia's biggest country, Jakarta, is the region highest number in coronavirus cases. Health expert says shortfalls in testing, contact tracing, and a consistently high positivity rate. The infection rate per person test indicate that the real number of infections is likely to be significantly higher. The infections continues rising in Indonesia because the citizens never allowed to health protocol over 60,225 people since the first case was detected in early March. A number of infections crossed 511,836 and 429,807 that has recovered from the COVID-19 outbreak. South Korea's education minister calls students' efforts to prevent COVID-19 disease ahead of college entrance exam. South Korea's Education Minister Yoo eun hye urges the public to join coronavirus prevention efforts as the college entrance exam is near. The government alone can't prevent an outbreak during the biggest test of the year for 490,000 people. It can only succeed with the help of everybody. The government further strengthening distancing rules for the capital Seoul and nearby regions three days after imposing curbs ahead of highly competitive annual college entrance exams scheduled for December 3. Infections among young people, many whom show no symptoms, also prompt the government to urge students to stop attending cramped schools and private lessons ahead of the college entrance exams. South Korea reports 583 new coronavirus cases, the highest since March, as the country grapples with a third wave of infections that has forced it to reimpose tough social distancing measures. That's all for today. Have a nice day and see you again.